Hi, this is Paul Namwag, Support Engineer at Several Nines. On this session, we're going to present to you about disaster recovery planning and MySQL and MariaDB. Later over this presentation, we'll cover how can cluster control offer you a large boost of productivity and efficiency when it comes to disaster recovery and have cluster control as your virtual DBA that offers diverse things you need such as observability and awareness in real time, including health and the state of your database nodes. So let's begin and go on on the slides. What is disaster recovery? Uh, disaster recovery covers policies, tools, and procedures that ensure your data is secure and protected in case of an outage or serious catastrophe. Operational failures are more common than natural disasters such as climatic events, flood, hurricane, or human-caused events such as engineer had accidentally run an erratic script, or worst case, like tourist events. The next question is, how well is your escalation chain, uh, which is the drivers? How fast it can be fixed? Who can approve the failover and any subsequent data loss? And how to reduce or avoid this problem from happening again as soon as possible? Uptime guarantees. So why you compromise it? We have a lot of companies giving 100% uptime guarantees, especially hosting companies and our cloud vendors or large data centers. In real world scenario, 100% uptime is hard and cannot be attainable, but 99.79 can be achieved. Then why a need to compromise, right? Since you also consider choosing your service providers and help your problems solved, why spend a lot of money for your disaster recovery and business continuity planning? You see, some marketing themes tells you that we offer 100% availability but we exclude da da da. Hence, it covers planned outages, for example, server or network maintenance, which can be inevitable at times. Failure of network or issues in the facilities like power loss, DOS attacks, hacker activities, or some malicious attacks, acts of God, whereas nature goes awry, is naturally unpredictable. In this graph, the lower the downtime, the more the database will cost to run. This is because we have to mitigate issues on several fronts, so we build redundancy into all different layers. And because the low the downtime, numbers can often come with an increased infrastructure complexity. The associated administrative overhead follows a similar curve. A uh, high availability database might find you managing a distribu distributed setup with physically separated data centers, uh, redundant application channels, management of data consistency during failovers, and more. With discernible amount of money and planning, you can reduce downtime, but at some point, getting from lower to lower is very expensive. Analyzing the risk, uh, you need to identify the impact, then it's probability of what's going to happen and how it will react based on these four actions plan, accept, prevent, then contain. In these areas, you can identify the four factors as such. It rarely, for example, number one, it rarely happens but the impact is low, so you can live with the risk until it goes down. Second, it rarely happens but the impact is high, so you need uh, to plan the steps on how to address it. Third, it happens frequently, but the impact is low. You will take appropriate steps to minimize the likelihood of it happening. Fourth, it happens frequently, and the impact is high. You will actively work on mitigating the risk. Example, data center failure, assume one outage per year. It does not happen often, but when it does, nothing works. So you need a backup DC somewhere else, depending on outage or impact and scale of your business. Perhaps have a dedicated data center or else lease from a data center provider or use a cloud service. Defining disaster recovery. So what's DR? Let's imagine a train with passengers going from Stockholm to Oslo. A uh, journey that takes just over six hours, the train breaks down about an hour after leaving Stockholm. The breakdown in the disaster, which is the point in time when the service stopped. The disaster recovery plan for the train is the process for calling help, of calling help, uh, troubleshooting the problem, uh, getting spare parts, and repairing the train so it can continue its journey to Oslo. 
Business continuity is the process of arranging for an alternative means of transport in order to deliver the service. Example, getting buses to transport the passengers to, the, to their destination. Here's the outage timeline. You take the most recent backup, recover for any data loss and can or might encounter service interruption, but best at the shortest time. Detects a failure detection, DR plan is activated, and crucial systems and underlying services are resumed once DR plan takes over to avoid drastic failure and potential loss of income. A disaster usually causes an out outage, which means system downtime and potential loss of data. Once we have detected the outage, we trigger our DR plan to recover from it. That's where RPO and RTO are introduced, namely recovery point objective for RPO and recovery time objective for RTO. Speaking of RTO or recovery time objective, it is the maximum acceptable length of time that your database can be offline. This includes the time to detect the failure, understand what it is, and activate failover or recovery procedures. Fail failure, to, uh, failure detection depends on your monitoring. When activating DR plan, uh, this is when we need playbooks and management approvals, communication to a predefined group, uh, set benchmarks, set RTO and RPO, especially for critical DBs, set the bar and make sure you're hitting the mark, detail the processes by which these things will be accomplished, benchmark on a scale as opposed to just pass or fail, and work on the weak links. Whereas recovery point objective or the RPO, it is the maximum acceptable length of time during which committed data in the database might be lost due to a major incident. The metric does not address the amount of data loss or the quality of the data. The, import the importance here is your data availability and how you can maximize it. The lower the RPO, the better. RPO will vary based on the type of data. Frequently modified customer data could have an RPO of just a few minutes, whereas less critical and frequently modified data could have an RPO of several hours since most of your data can be static or redundant. When defining backup strategy, we rarely see people take into consideration the RPO. The backup strategy needs to depend on how much data you can afford to lose. So here, even CTO and Vice President of Amazon uh, Mr. Werner Vogels claims that AWS, uh, one of the top cloud providers, AWS has a major outages every year, despite all the engineering experience in running DCs. If they can keep it up 100%, what else you have come in your disaster and business continuity planning? So here, the lower the downtime, the higher the DR cost. The cost of DR systems cannot be higher than the value of your assets. More servers, processes, more people to manage, training, etc. That is why we need to automate so we keep control. Prepare your backups. Preparing a backup are oftentimes stored in a non-hot site. A good practice for taking a back a database backup must have at least physical and a logical backup. Both can have impact on RTO, depends on how large your backup. A good practice is to have a full and incremental backup with PITR compatible to reduce RPO. So PITR means uh, point in time recovery. Full backups is usually necessary, but they, are, they, but they take uh, server resources and disk space. Incrementals are good, but increase RTO, you have to apply multiple smaller increments. Uh, backups has to be identified as useful or successful, especially in times of disaster recovery, is required and has to be proven and tested. So it's very important that your backups has to be verified. Encryption is also a concern, especially when restoring it at rest or sending your backup in transit, that is over the wire and, uh, and then to the internet. Lastly, always keep a copy of your latest backup in active site. Define your backup retention. You must be able to identify based on your organization's or company requirements. Sometimes you have to keep records for years. Um, example, the common here are 
CDR data and telecoms required to keep for seven years. When taking a backup with a hot site, ensure that when new schemas and data are segregated with the old ones, you need to consider that you also take a backup of new application ver version versus the old one to avoid mismatch between application version and schema version. For a backup against a hot site, you can reinstall DBs and apps from scratch and restore data to it. Recovery time has to be predictable. You can take advantage of pre-configured AMIs or use auto-scaling, like for example. Another approach is replicating over to a hat, a hat asynchronously. It has lower RTO and RPO and has the 99 and several nines exact copy of the hot site. It enables you fast failover. Adding a delayed slave to guard against human error is also a good thing uh, to avoid administrative error or application bug that can cause drastic data loss. Yet still, backup is important. Things you have to keep in mind with this approach, uh, you might need to scale up the DR site before switching to it. The usual setup of this approach mostly has a sync node, can be warm or cold site. You might otherwise use your async node as a hot standby, which only receives reads so in case your primary or master comes down. When failing over to your async node, it can still it can be still performant and has low latency as the probability that the indexes and its data are in the cache. Hence, the, the DR or the, I mean data recovery disaster recovery is running initially in degraded mode. Only switch on minimal critical functions if deemed necessary. When using synchronous replication to hot site, you can leverage the highest tier of DR. Redundant copies of data in at least two hot sites. Uh, this is for business aiming at minimal RTO and RPO. Data on primary site and hot sites have the same transactional state. It is asynchronously replicated across three sites. It requires at least three sites or nodes to avoid network partitioning. All the three sites are masters, can be considered as masters, depends on your architectural type setup. When on this type of setup, all are able to provide service to users. Failover is instantaneous and automatic. The failure detection can cause to be the culprit of adding time cost to your RTO. This is for businesses with little or no tolerance for data loss and who need to restore data to applications rapidly. Monitoring systems are important to detect failures. Distributed database setups across multiple data centers can be complex for applications to keep track of. Um, similar to the service discovery mechanism in distributed systems, for instance, uh, failed instances or instances that are undergoing a recovery process should not be receiving traffic. Perhaps uh, there are strategies around sending database updates to a specific set of nodes, hence the need for a database proxy that can control traffic to the cluster and at the same time abstract the complexity of the database layer from the applications. So. Here, um, where we will tackle about cluster control on data recovery with uh, MySQL or MariaDB. Features of cluster control for disaster recovery. Cluster control is a complex type of software which offers monitoring for database, load balancers or proxies, system, network, its underlying data storage or its underlying monitoring host systems. It offers auto recovery which covers automatic failover, cluster and node recovery enables you to create and manage your own backup, allows you to schedule and create your backup policy with security options, which allows you to comply security and regulation compliance, allows you to create a synchronous or synchronous cluster, has a feature to create a cluster from backup, can rebuild your database efficiently based on straightforward UI, allows you to create a backup and at the same time verify the backup. Cluster Control supports diverse open source databases, not limited to MySQL and MariaDB, but also supports Percona Server, Galera Cluster, PostgreSQL, or TimescaleDB, and MongoDB or Percona Server for MongoDB. But that means disaster recovery covers the supported database, databases, especially MySQL or MariaDB. 
allows you to de deploy uh, load balancers or proxies such as HEProxy, ProxySQL, or MaxScale for which you can leverage load balancing mechanism, especially after an automatic failover when a disaster happens. Has ProxySQL management, which is very helpful. Easy to deploy load balancers and proxies with the capacity to deploy keep alive for high availability and link to your existing load balancers or proxies.